How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to the Blue Shifting, and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaia, where, uh... I gotta wait for the proverbial shoe to drop. I, I feel like we've had our big climax, um... Probably more. I mean... This game hasn't failed to deliver in any way, and I have, upon reflection, realized that oftentimes there's two climaxes for each story. So, yeah, I imagine there's something else happening, but not sure what. I've had hints that we might be finishing up today, but we'll see. You know, my pacing can only be very relative, so we'll find out. But other than the fact that we blew up our school, <laughs> Sachi's doing really good. We've had some really positive encounters with her. She seemingly is doing really well and robustly following her heart, but... The nightmares that plagued her when she first, like, was recovering from the tragedy of her parents' deaths. Well, death and comatose. They seem to be returning, and they're starting to interfere with her life. And now we've got a phone call or contact info from her, like, uncle. Who, after hearing about us from a letter, has specifically talked to us saying, Hey, here's, some, here's a packet of information, and I want to talk to you. So, it looks like we're going to be calling him. I don't think there's anything else to really say. This could be the last episode, could be not, I don't know, but I'm sure you actually probably know, it's probably in the title. I, I don't get to glean that wonderful information, you do, so let's see how it goes, shall we? Let's get started. From the look of this number, he's not in the Tokyo area. Back in my own room, I look over the scrap of paper from, uh, Chizuru handed me, cell phone in hand. Whatever the contents of the envelope may be, it's clear that Sachi's uncle has something that he wants to tell me. No reason to think too hard. I'll know once we talk. I mean, that's fair. Like, I, I can understand being nervous, but like... What are you gonna do? Like, ignore this? Like, no. Of course not. After one final attempt at persuading myself, I enter the number from Chizuru's note on the private cell phone. Yes, when the call connects, I hear the voice of a seemingly mild-mannered middle-aged man on the other end of the line. Am I speaking with... Komine Akihiro-san? Yes. Yes, I apologize for not introducing myself. That's very, very understanding of him. I like how his name is actually Sachi's uncle. It's not even like his actual name. I appreciate your understanding. Uh... No, I thought it might be best to hear what you have to say first. I'm feeling like uneasy. My stomach's churning. Oh no. Certainly. As instructed, I rip open the thick envelope Principal Tachibana handed me on the rooftop. Inside, I find a single metal key, withered with age. This would seem to be. Yes, that's correct. Oh boy. Oh. That. Even just going to that place is gonna be rough. But what are we gonna see? Because we never really learned what her parents worked on. What if there's a. In, what if there's something really interesting going on there? The workshop. I understand what you're saying, sir, but why would you give this to me? Oh, maybe, maybe. I'd appreciate some clarification, yes. Yeah. Did she talk about the blowing up school? I'm not sure if she did. Shocked? Oh. That's right, we did contact him then. Interesting, so they wanted her to come by, and either she didn't feel like she wanted to, or she was so caught up in all the other stuff that was going on. Like maybe her preparations to uh, you know, eliminate the test, she just didn't. Well, that's good. <laughs> I bet they were. 
学園での思い出が綴られていて最後にはだから私は今幸せですそう書いてあったんだよ That's so sweet. You don't say. 他にも幼い頃に遊んでいた男の子と再会して彼女にしてもらったと嬉しそうに書いてあってねああその子がどんなにすごい男の子なのかが熱心に書かれていた That's so sweet. それが風見くんだったんだよああ、like, like, I feel like I'm blushing like on its behalf I see so that's how you learned about me ああおそらく君はもう気づいていると思うがあの子は幼い頃に目の前で起こった事故が原因で他人の頼みを断れない子になってしまったそしてまるでロボットのようになってしまったあの子は普通の学園での生活は困難と判断されて、oh yeah. no, no, that, she proved that. 三浜学園への入学を余儀なくされたんだ、yes. そんな幸があんな手紙を送ってきたんだから本当に驚いたんだよそして No, I only gave her the opportunity to realize something about herself. If the Sachi you knew had changed, uh, Akihiro san, it's entirely the result of her own efforts. So, that's right. I like him. Maybe, like, if there's anyone I would want to aspire to be in this game, it would be Sachi's uncle. He sounds like a very genuinely caring individual. As I said, you really don't owe me any thanks. You're very kind, sir. So, I think that's what I said. Uh oh. Is that so? Yes. I think that's what I said. Yes. She's told me that much herself. So, I think that's what I said. 私が君に送った鍵はその日サチの母親のポケットの中から見つかったものだおーおーオーケー I think I might see maybe they made her a gift maybe they were gonna give her a present you know after having to wait so long and the present waiting in the workshop did she have the key to their house as well? いや二人のポケットから見つかったのは工場の鍵だけだった。Oh, that is really weird, actually. そう考えると、少し妙だと思わないかね。Hmm. I have to agree, yes. Typically, people keep their most frequently used keys together on a single ring. And since her parents had left the house, presumably planning to bring their daughter back home, grabbing the key to their workshop doesn't really make sense. 私は事故が起こる一週間前に弟の家を訪ねていたんだが、その時、弟がこんなことを言っていたんだよ。All right, yeah, like were they like involved with the Yakuza or something? もうすぐ兄さんをびっくりさせるような報告があるんだってね。Hmm. Your jaw drop. 結局それが何なのかは聞けずじまいだったが、弟は工場で何かをしているようだった。Are you saying you haven't entered the workshop your,、uh, yourself since the accident? あ,あ、見ていない。Hmm. If there was something truly valuable in there, like, and somebody knew about it, maybe enough to, like, want to take them out, which I did say at the time that the accident seemed oddly suspicious, almost like someone was waiting for an opportunity. But even then, like, if there was something valuable in there, wouldn't someone have broken in by now? Excuse me saying so, but why not? Yes, from what she's told me, the family business was featured on television, things became very busy, and they stopped paying much attention to her. その通りだよ。私は家内の家に婿養子として入ったから、何の影響もなかったが、もともと兄弟の中でも筋の良かった弟のところには、注文が殺到してね。いや。どうしても手が足りなくて、私も何度か手伝ったことがあったくらいだったんだ。Is that so? だが私には。仕事が忙しくなったくらいで弟がサチのことをないがしろにするとは思えないんだよ。Would you mind explaining? 弟はね、男三人兄弟の末っ子で、兄からも両親からも、だから、自分にも子供ができたら、うんと甘やかしてやるんだって、そう言っていてね。That's very sweet. It really is. I think, uh, parents wanting to do as good as or better than their parents. Like, I think. I would guess that all parents, at least 
most of them want that. I know my parents desperately wanted me to have a better life than they did. Um, you know, they saw the fault in their parents and they wanted to improve things for me. And I saw the fault in my parents and I'm wanting to improve things in my future generations. And hopefully it continues upward. Because we live in a world that's a lot less violent, a lot less terrible and a lot of ways like we feel like it's worse in a lot of times because media and social media specifically hype things up and make them feel way bigger than they actually are or make mountains of molehills there's not to say there's not terrible things happening there's terrible things happening absolutely but in the history of the world and per and working from like percentage of populations and, and numbers such as that we have seen dramatic improvements like violent crime has been going down over the past like 20 years and um, doesn't mean it doesn't happen, doesn't mean you don't need to be careful, and maybe a lot of that going down is more about people being aware and being prepared, rather than simply there's less people willing to commit violence, but it's a good trend, it's a good thing that, like, in a world that feels so out of control, that it's actually in a much more balanced place than it has been for the last several hundred years. And, uh, it's always good to keep that fresh perspective, that a lot of that improvement likely comes through education, and it comes from recognizing the faults of our predecessors and wanting to not repeat them or maybe to view the world more openly honestly and being more receptive to people who are different all of that positive and like helps like, grow as a community and just i think the only part of it i feel like might be a little less apparent is neighbors being neighborly i feel like it's a lot easier just to pull up in your house or apartment and just pretend everyone else doesn't exist but I don't know. I do feel like having positive people in your environment and being able to talk to them and have good relations with them and just like, like, yeah, that can burn you, but I think more often than not, it's a benefit. Anyway. Okay. Well, she was a child. I think her perspective was probably a bit skewed. Sounds like quite the doting parent. Ah. Right, yeah. A reason. Right, yeah. A reason. And you're saying Sachi doesn't? Ah. <sighs> That is... I mean, I feel like we're gonna have to take her there because of the current sleeping nightmares and, like, maybe we just need to keep pushing a little harder. And the pro and with her open perspective now, maybe she'll be able to handle it better. But at the same time, I still feel like that's just... It's... That's scary. I'm, I'm nervous. Right. Right. Absolutely didn't deserve that. それで精神科の先生とも相談して実家には And she really might have to. It's not even a question of like should she? It's like I think she needs to. And therefore you sent me this key. Huh? Are you really comfortable leaving something this important to my judgment? これは既婚者の勘だが、サチは風見くんのことをとても信頼している。ナイス。そのことがあの手紙からは伝わってきた。だからこそ、その判断ができるのは君しかいないと思ったんだよ。<笑> That's fair. I mean, it's odd because normally, even like a boyfriend girlfriend can feel very, very close, but like the commitment isn't there yet. And so I'd be like hesitant to just throw all my trust into someone's lap. But with her circumstances, I, I really think it makes sense. She's not had a single breakthrough like this since any time before, but now she sounds so much more balanced and more wholesome and more like self-driven. I'd be like, you know what? I'll hedge my bets. This guy seems like he's on the right track, and it seems like he, he must genuinely care if he wasn't just taking advantage of her. Probably. Sachi, 
この先の人生が幸せであってくれることを望んでいるその思いが風見君にとっても同じだとしたらうん、mm. right. In that case, I'll accept it. そうかやはり君に託すことにして正解だったな Heck of a gamble What makes you say that? 親の勘ってやつさ<笑> If you say so 君との初めての話がお願いになってしまって心苦しいが今度サチが家に帰る機会があったらその時は風見君も一緒に来ておくれ That's cool. かないともども歓迎するよ God, I like him! Sachi's uncle's great! Of course, I'd be honored. Ah, so that's it. Thank you, Kazumi-kun. Yes, and thank you, sir. As our call comes to an end, I give a pointless little bow to the,、uh, of the head to Sachi's uncle. Can't help but offer a little respect to a man who shows such sin- sincere trust in a youngster he's never even met. Most likely, Sachi and her parents had their signals crossed, and everything should have been cleared up with that very day. I had vaguely suspected something of the sort, but Komine Akihiro's story has left me pretty firmly convinced. From the sound of things, there's a decent chance that workshop holds the answer that will unravel Sachi's painful misunderstanding. Assuming that these nightmares are connected to her sense of guilt about the past, I'd almost certainly need to take my chances and make use of this key. That's sad. Maybe he should go ahead before and just check. I don't know. Should he, though? Right now, I don't think Sachi could accept what she'd find there. Hmm. <sighs> My dreams are always the same, but not today. Today, I dreamt of a girl in a small dim room weeping and wailing. When I squinted my eyes against the darkness, I realized that the girl with cowering on the floor was Sachi. Sachi, but not the Sachi I know. Her legs were locked in thick chains, binding her to a massive ball of iron. She couldn't stand, she couldn't even drag herself along the rough floor. <laughs> That's how she sees herself. Even so, she struggled and squirmed, desperately trying to escape the heavy fetters biting into her flesh. But no matter how hard she tried, she, the cold iron wouldn't yield. Every twist and turn only brought more anguish, and in the end, she stopped trying. Thought she was sealed in that gloomy prison with no chance of escape, and I was powerless to help her. I could only watch her, exhausted and hopeless, wa- slowly wasting away. Oddly enough, I'm freed from that draining, dr- despairing nightmare by the same thing that agra- announced its arrival the sound of Sachi screaming.、Yeah! Oh, that hurts to hear. Oh, Sachi, no. No, Sachi. We, uh. This can't keep happening. The ear splitting shriek jolts me awake, adrenaline coursing through my veins. <laughs> Twisting my side, I immediately understand that the final scream was all too real. <laughs> Thought she's clutching at her arms as if to embrace herself, her clenched teeth audibly chattering against each other. Hold on, this is. It doesn't take long for me to realize this abnormality of the situation. Thought she admitted that she'd been having nightmares lately, and I knew they were leaving her de- dispirited and exhausted. As of yesterday, the situation didn't seem like an outright emergency, but these symptoms are all too clearly something else entirely. She's experiencing pain and terror well beyond that of a mere bad dream can offer. This is even beyond what I would consider a night terror. Night terrors are nightmares that kind of break the barrier that keeps you. Like, your body naturally produces its own kind of sedative to prevent you from being too rambunctious in your sleep. Because as your brain is kind of clearing and resetting all its synapses and resetting all the chemicals in your brain, which is you know, necessary for your brain to function, which is why sleep is important, you toss and turn, right? Like, some of us are more active than others, but simply the only reason why we aren't getting up and running around is because our brain sedates itself. But then you can have those things, like you've heard of sleep paralysis demon. The idea is that you can have a partial wake up where your consciousness wakes up like, like it normally would, but the paralysis, the self medicated paralysis symptoms don't. So you feel trapped in your bed and you can have these odd hallucinations because your brain isn't fully awake.、Um, and then night terrors are almost like the reverse, where your brain isn't waking up, but your body unsedates itself. And so you have these, these nightmares that you suddenly start physically reacting to, and it becomes traumatic and it's terrifying, and you start. Struggling to know what's real and what's not because, again, your brain is half waking. It doesn't really fully comprehend or can untangle your dreams from reality. And that'd be terrifying for me. I have very, very vivid, like, incredibly vivid dreams. 
I've heard a lot of people say that they don't feel things in their dreams. They can't read things in their dreams. I've been able to do that. I guess I'm pretty sure I've been able to read, but I definitely can touch things. I see things in color. I can touch them in the dream. They feel real and tangible. They'll have like um, texture to them and, and temperature even. I had a dream once where I grabbed something that was like cold, like a, like a chunk of ice and it felt cold, but I woke up and it was like the middle of summer and there's nothing in my room that could have actually felt cold. And it wasn't like I was like hanging out with people that could have been pranking me. It was just me in my house and I didn't have any siblings around. So it was just me. It's like that kind of stuff has always been real for me. So I always worried and always kind of feared that if this barrier ever got crossed from me, it'd be too terrifying because I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Tachi's eyes are wide open, tears streaming relentlessly down her cheeks, a control contorted grimace frozen on her face. It's the expression of a human being forcibly shown a gruesome memory they'd like nothing more than to forget. <laughs> Even as the alar these alarms th alarming thoughts run through my head, Sachi continues to grind out apologies like a broken wind-up toy. Dang! I don't know exactly what she's seeing right now or what triggered her sudden to suddenly enter this state. But whatever the answer to those questions, maybe I can't allow this to continue even a second longer. Hey, Sachi, wake up! <laughs> I shout her name at the point blank range to no effect. She continues to mum mutter deliriously, staring right through me. Sachi, snap out of it! Sachi! <laughs> One of those things where it's like, maybe the slap is the thing that you need to do, or a bucket of water. Even when I shake her by the shoulder, almost too vigorously, the light doesn't return to her clouded eyes. Gosh darn it! What do I do? How do I make her hear my voice? Aww. Okay. This is gonna be tough to decide how to do the thumbnail. In the end, only one thing comes to mind. Wrapping my arms around Sachi, I envelop her in a gentle hug. It's alright. It's alright. Keeping my voice as calm as possible, I whisper reassuring words in her ear, just like my master used to do for me. Using the simple warmth of my body more real than words could ever be, I speak directly to Sachi's heart. In time, Sachi's previously frantic breathing begins to slow, and the violent tremble of her body gradually subsides. Hmm. Yeah, it's us. Finally regaining her consciousness, Sachi looks up at me with the eyes of a distorted chi disoriented child. You alright, Sachi? You were having a nightmare until just a second ago, and a pretty terrible one. That dream? Oh, you shut your face. If you think for a second, we care whether you have kept appearances or anything, you are so wrong, Sachi. When I try to prod the conversation forward, Sachi avoids the subject with a forced attempt at humor. Mm, hold it, Sachi. I reach out and catch Sachi's arm as she tries to flee. <laughs> What's torturing you like this? Sachi... That's... So... No. No. The girl's doing her best to put up a tough front, but she's still too visibly shaken for it to be halfway convincing. That's a lie. The way you were screaming just now, that wasn't just a bad dream. I'm thinking it was PTSD attack. You're going to tell me I'm wrong? Sachi, you shouldn't feel like you have to. We accepted you as you. That includes all of it. That's the, that's, that's the foundation of a good relationship. You accept everything, even the stuff you didn't know about. And you try and accept it all. Now, obviously, there's certain lines that you can't cross, but oftentimes those are things that are like choices. Like if someone's making poor decisions, actively choosing to do things that are self-destructive or destructive to the relationship or to your trust, yeah, not worth it. Stick, get out of that. But if someone is suffering from things that have happened in their past, things that have long since like you know vanished, but for them are still present and real, baggage they carry, damage that they've suffered, or terrible relationships they've been a part of before, 
you have to be willing to accept that when you get in a relationship. And they should have to be willing to accept that you're willing to accept that. It's tough though, it's tough. But a lot of us sadly come through life with bumps and bruises, not just to our bodies, but to our very souls. Things happen. Some of us are far go through far more trauma than you'd ever believe. And you know what? We're still going to have, they're still going to be able to have, despite those things, functional, productive lives. But it doesn't mean that it's just gone and maybe it's, it's been taken care of and this is never going to come up again. Trauma is trauma. PTSD is a real thing. Mumbling resigned words in a weird, in a, in a wry tone of voice, Sachi turns back to face me, then slowly lowers herself to a sitting position on my bed. Oh, my neck hurts. Ugh. In other words, I was on the money. Yeah, no freaking kidding. I mean, it matches. It makes a lot of sense. I see. This is one of those times where being right isn't particularly pleasant. I'd been so darn pleased with myself for saving Sachi. Self-centered as it may be, this feels like something, like a cosmic slap to the face. Like someone telling me, you haven't saved anyone yet. There's a sharp, bitter stab of pain somewhere deep in my chest. No. Unlike some of the other stuff that happens in other routes, I really don't hold this against her at all. I don't, I have, I have no... She was desperately trying to hope that it wouldn't be a problem. She didn't want it to come up, and she felt like the best thing she could do was avoid it. But now, yeah, it's time to talk. No, you didn't need you don't need to apologize for that. I understand that she couldn't bring herself to volunteer the truth out of concern for me. To criticize her for that, you'd have to be an oblivious a-hole or a genetic a genuine sadist. But I do want to know what's making you suffer like this. Stopping in mid-sentence, Sachi lightly bites her lower lip. From the expression on her face, just thinking about it must be enough to send some painful images flashing through her head. I know what they wrote on the reports, at least. Not much more. From what I read, a drunk driver ran a red light on the road outside the park where the two of us used to play, hitting your parents at full speed. Yes. Survived, but fell into a persistent vegetative state. She's still hospitalized to this day. But it's the details that matter for Sachi. It was the fact that they were running after her because she ran into the street. It's the fact that her mom asked like that question like why before she lost consciousness. Those are really scarring, especially for a kid who can't can't parse out the de the difference between being involved in an accident and being the cause of an accident. Heck, kids blame themselves for things like divorce when they literally have nothing to do with a divorce 99% of the time. And that 1% of the time they are, those parents are being a-holes anyway. Are you telling me you've been reliv reliving the precise moment you witnessed in that accident over and over? So, what do I ゴムが焼ける嫌な匂いもいつまでもアイドリングを続けるトラックのエンジン音も鮮明に感じられますから。Can <笑> そして自由に動かなくなった体を懸命に動かして顔を上げるとすっかり足がすくんでしまっていた私にお母さんはこう言ったんです。サチ、どうしてって。それは私にとってとても今日はお家にいてくれなかったの。どうしてもっといい子でいてくれなかったの。私たちがこんな目にあったのは全部あなたのせいなのよ。そう言われているような気がして。
だから私が病院のベッドで目を覚ました後お母さんが助かったと聞かされて最初に怖いって思ってしまったんです。Oh, then you blamed yourself for that, but you were a kid. 本当ならよかったってそう思うはずなのに。もしお母さんが目を覚ましたら、その口から私を憎むような言葉が出るんじゃないかって。This is a perfect example of that. If left in the unknown or left to speculate, we often will conjure up the worst case scenarios. I do this all the time, but I feel like it's also that's the why they say, like, you have to be careful about your when you hear about PR nightmares. Like, content creators lately, like, they're constantly calling each other out for random crap that just shouldn't happen anyway. But oftentimes, they either don't say anything or they try and say something formulative because if you leave the the silence, people just start to speculate and people grasp onto the worst things. And that can be right, that could be dangerous, but then if they're right, yeah. Dang. I don't think Sachi's ever shared these feelings with anyone else. In parallel to this cascade of raw, honest emotion, a constant stream of tears flows down her cheeks. That's enough. Aww, yeah! Finally! A main character who actually hugs people! As the words finally fail her, I embrace her trembling body. Why? Why is this such an infrequent thing? I scream at most main characters at some point to be like, Give them a hug! Thank you, Yuji. Thank you! I'm sorry for making you talk about something you didn't want to remember. Oh, yeah. Days, if you want. Days. Aww. A little after the sun begins to peek above the horizon, Sachi lifts her face from my chest and smiles at me. You're not lying this time, are you? <laughs> All right. Determining that her smile isn't artificially plastered on her face, I slowly release Sachi's body. All right. You know what? Sure. <laughs> Aww. This blatant attempt at flattery isn't going to earn you any head padding. <laughs> That's a great way to answer that. That a fact. Hi. Feeling the warmth of her person you love is so is a comfortable, calming thing. Enough to make you want to forget all the rest. That said, I can't just let the discussion from before drop. I hesitate awkwardly, unsure how to proceed, but after a moment of silence, Sachi resolves my dilemma by speaking first. Punishment? はい。仕事が忙しくなってから、お父さんとお母さんが私に冷たくなったことは、事故が起こったあの日、お父さんとお母さんはそれまでが嘘のように優しかったんです。アフェクショナーはい。あの日、私が目を覚ますと、いつも
そう思った私はすぐに家を飛び出しましたそして私はユウくんとの待ち合わせ場所だった公園に向かいああ夕方になっても家に戻らない私を心配して探しに来たお父さんとお母さんが I see That explains how Sachi convinced herself the accident was her fault だから私がどんなに後悔してもどれだけいい子でいようとしてもあの日に事故が起こったという事実は消えませんそしてそれはどうしようもないくらいに子供だった自分のせいあの日の事故は私が二人の言うことを聞いていれば起こることのないものだったんです、oh, gosh. だからきっとその原因を作った私のことをお父さんとお母さんは恨んでいるそう思っている限り私はあの日の夢を見続けるんだと思います And from the sound of things, she's still blaming herself even now. The tone of her voice is almost resigned, as if accepting her responsibility. But that doesn't mean she's come to terms with what happened. She's simply despaired of ever finding forgiveness. The proof is written all over her face. Even as Sachi speaks calmly of the past, her expression is filled with bitter regret. All right, I understand where this is coming from. But there's still one thing I don't get. Up until just recently, I'm pretty sure you weren't having daily nightmares, let alone traumatic flashbacks. What happened? Do you have any idea why they've gotten so bad? So, I think it's a part of her feels like she doesn't deserve it. I think it's a part of her feels like she doesn't deserve it. I think it's a part of her feels like she doesn't deserve it. I think i この学園でユウくんと再会してから自分の間違いに気づいて大切な人と一緒にいられるという幸せな時間を実感するようになってからまたあの日の夢を見るようになっただとしたらお父さんとお母さんが私のことを怒っているのかもしれません In other words, you're saying your parents don't want you to be happy? もちろんこの考えは私の勝手な思い込みかもしれませんでも自分たちはこんなに苦しんでいるのにどうしてお前だけが笑っているんだ自分のわがままで家族の幸せを壊した張本人が幸せになっていいのかあの日のことを忘れるなそう言われているような気がするんです All right. I understand. <sighs> Boy. I committed the sin of disobedience. My selfishness led directly to that accident. Of course, my parents would resent my happiness. Her father's dead, her mother's still asleep in the hospital bed. They can neither confirm nor deny that belief, let alone offer Sachi their forgiveness. With no possibility of resolution, your, reason, your sense of sin swells grotesquely inside you like an ugly black tumor. I really do understand. The circumstances were very different, but I carry similar feelings about the death of my own parents. Unless you know a way to turn back time, the debts you owe the dead can never truly be repaid. They can never accept your apologies or excuses. Sachi too realized the harsh truths. Desperate to escape the torture of her flashbacks, she reduced herself to a shell of a human being, numbing her own feelings. She overwrote her identity with that of the good girl. And it worked. The nightmares left her. But thanks to my meddling, Sachi's return to normality, once again, she's defen defenseless against her dreams. It makes sense. <sighs> there are two specific elements that contribute to these awful nightmares. First, Sachi never had the chance to hear her parents' explanation for their cold behavior, and second, she continues to believe on some, ra some half-rational level that the accident was her fault. Her guilt, her fear of her parents' hatred feed off her own happiness. In other words, if she wants to stop seeing these nightmares, she has to stop being happy. Thought she seems to have half convinced herself that suffering like this is just the price she has to pay, but I'm not enough of a masochist to accept that. Yeah, thank goodness. I'm not about to put up with a girl I love being miserable. Nope, forget not miserable. Is that all possible? I want her to be the happiest person in the damn world, and I think that's only natural. Can we make a parade for this man? Fetch me! And precisely because I carry a burden similar to hers, I might be able to teach her a thing or two. 
Our burdens may be similar, but we're carrying them very differently. There's no reason to let your sin chain you to the ground. There's no need to lock yourself up in a dark room forever. It doesn't do anyone any good. And most of all, if I'm not mistaken, Sachi has an obligation to become happier than anyone else. Sachi, are you really all right with that? Are you really satisfied with this? Torture by nightmares, living every day in terror of your mother's words? Caught off guard by my challenge to the status quo, Sachi casts her eyes down in bewilderment. She can't find the words, but the answer's written all over her face. Of course I don't want to see the nightmares, but there's nothing I can do. Personally, I don't think there's any reason you need to be tied down by the past any longer. That's right. Keeping that in mind, I'm going to tell you a way to get rid of those nightmares that's give, that's giving you, that are giving you so much trouble. What do you what do you, what you do with that knowledge is up to you. Again, oh, he's doing it's such good. He's giving her power. Yes. What? You don't believe what I'm telling you? Yes, it might be hard for you to believe, having lived with that guilt for so long. That said, I really don't think you need to drag it around anymore, and I'm not lying about knowing a way out. So, it's so heart-wrenching that she even has to ask. That's right. There's only one thing for you to do about these nightmares. Kill the source. Interesting phrasing there. What? That could mean a lot. <laughs> to end my persistent nightmares, I need only kill the source. Five days after Yukun spoke those words to me, I've arrived at the town where I spent the earliest years of my life. I'm here to pay a visit to my mother, sleeping even now, even now in the local hospital. And this, as in so many other things, I was guided by Yukun's advice. There's only one thing for you to do about these nightmares. Kill the source. That's right. Your sin won't be forgiven. It's just not possible. So if you want to free yourself from this guilt, you've got no choice but to eliminate its source. That's up to you. Like, she cuts off before she say it, but she said the word Okasa. Like, her mom. I'm telling you to kill. That's it. You've got plenty of options, but there's more than one answer here. I can't make that decision for you. You have to do this yourself. Presented with this new problem, I began with a series of considerations for the word kill. Interpreting it literally, he was telling me to deprive someone of their life to cause death. From there, I could find only two possible answers. The first, as he immediately, occur had immediately occurred to me, was to kill my mother. The second was to kill myself, to end my own life. But even now, I'm not confident that I correctly identified the options which Yukun spoke. True, killing my mother might put an end to my fear for final question. No, it won't. No, it won't. And if I die, I'll no longer be capable of suffering or feeling guilt. But fundamentally, I can't help feeling that that act of killing itself is a very extreme way of approaching these problems. Oh, good! I was starting to worry! Killing my mother would make me a criminal. Killing myself would mean leaving this world behind. In either case, of course, I could no longer be with Yukun. If these were the answers he wanted me to find, was Yukun lying when he said he loved me? My thoughts ran in circles before I knew it. Five days had flown by and I was no closer to an answer. In the end, Yukun was unable to hold his silence. No matter what decision you're going to make, you should see your mother first. I think you're capable of that, Nasachi. It's only been a few hours since he spoke those words. The moment I heard his proposal, my heart thudded heavily in my breast. Since the day of the accident, my mother had never spoken, never opened her eyes. She's been reduced to a living symbol of my ine 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 indelible sin. And if mom really does resent me, she might not even want to see my face. These very thoughts have kept me from visiting her for many years now. 
Not to say that the visits I paid her in those first weeks were worthy of the name. Since that horrible day, I've never once managed to spend any real time with her. Perhaps Uncle Akihiro understood how I felt. He didn't challenge me on the matter or even encourage me to make the trip. In that case, there was no real reason for me to visit the hospital, or so I, was allowed, I allowed myself to believe. In truth, I've just been ma making selfish excuses. I was running away from my own mother. That neglect is proof enough I never really overcame my guilt toward her. I was simply hiding from it. As long as I permit myself that cowardice, it may well be impossible to find a meaningful answer to my current dilemma. And so I resolved to face up to what I'd refused to acknowledge for so long. Of course, speaking the question out loud doesn't get me any closer to an answer. Yukun's always three or four steps ahead of me, thinking on far higher level. It's funny, because, like, in this case, yes, but it's, again, it's because it's a path he's walked. This is why mentorship and, you know, listening to, like, not every elder is worth listening to. It's not because someone's age, they actually have, like, some kind of benevolent knowledge that they can, like, distill upon you. But a lot of times you can find people who have walked a very similar road and kind of know the same landmarks to be able to guide you. Sure, the path changes between travelers, but ultimately, a lot of the destinations and travel markers are the same. So finding somebody who's walked that path can be extremely helpful. But it's sad that sometimes that gets dissolved into this idea that elders are superior because they've been around before. It's like, no. There's a lot of paths that younger generations, like us, have to walk that our parents never walked. We need to understand that that's part of life. Hopefully we can find other people, and sometimes we can find others that of our own age who have walked that path who can help us. I can't help but think about Alcoholics Anonymous. Um, I had a close family member who had to go through that process, and they were transformed by the process of being able to make connections with people that had their best interests at heart, rather than just seeking some kind of pleasure or, or fun. It's amazing what terrible friends can bring you to. And it's equally incredible the heights that uh, the good friends can pull you up from. Like pull you from the greatest of depths up into something as high as the stratosphere. This puzzle must have meaning and I want it very badly to reach the answer he found. <laughs> but even so, I must admit I find myself disturbed. Merely speaking the word kill leaves a bitter aftertaste on my tongue and a sharp ache in my stomach. <laughs> Part of me is like, should we stop here? But part of me is like, go on, go on. <sighs> I think we're going to go for a long haul here. This is probably going to be a long episode. Hi. After filling out some paperwork in the nurse station, I'm provided with directions to my mother's sickbed. The procedure hasn't changed, neither has Mon's hospital room. Everything is exactly the same as it was on that day. At one point, a nurse I recognized from my time here calls out to me. Is that you, Sachan? Will you be all right alone, dear? I answer with a polite, yes, I'll be fine, and proceed down the hallway without breaking my stride. So Yuji isn't here at all. But when I finally arrive in front of my mother's hospital room, my breath catches in my throat. And with that as a signal, my previous functional legs abruptly turn clumsy, lead in stumps. My head begins to throb violently. <laughs> oh, come on, Sachi, come on! It's been many years now. Maybe it won't hurt like it did back then. I was a fool to believe such nonsense from, the very, from even a moment. My body knows that something painful waits beyond that door, and it's not shy about registering that object its objections. Mom's anguished, bloody face flashes unbidden before my eyes. Before I know it, I've begun to hyperventilate. Come on. Come on, Sachi. Come on! <laughs> Gradually, even standing grows perilously difficult, and I find myself leaning heavily against the corridor wall. Sachi, <laughs> This is good staff. Hospitals are so over overworked these days. I, I, she's lucky that anyone even noticed. Of course, Japan might be different, but I get the impression that it's kind of the same everywhere. 
Apparently, sensing something of a desperation, I feel I, I feel from the expression on my face, the nurse kindly withdraws. To tell the truth, I don't even remember what I said to her just now. Just keeping myself conscious is taking every ounce of effort I can muster. <laughs> Trying very hard to convince myself of that, I forcibly throw open the door to the room, letting the momentum carry me stumbling inside. Whoa, what? Instantly, my eyes find my mother's face peeking out from above the sterile white sheet covering her lower body. But the person sleeping in that bed is utterly unlike the mom who reminds, reigns so clearly in my memories. Her cheeks are thin to the point of emaciation. The color of her skin is pale and waxy as that of a corpse. <gasps> and yet, seeing her transformed like this brings back with astonishing clarity the awful moment when I was first guided into the intensive care unit, the first time I saw what had become of her. She lay there in a nest of unfamiliar machines. A huge oxygen mask covered her mouth, her body pierced with IV needles, medical tubing connecting her to strange electronic equipment, and even that machines hissed and clicked around her. My mother simply lay there, so still it seemed she'd been transformed to stone. When I saw her there, I remember feeling the same way I do now. She isn't the mom I know anymore, and she never will be again. <laughs> come on, Sachi, come on, Sachi. <laughs> What the fetch? Oh, that was terrifying. <laughs> the words echo forcefully through my head as though someone's drilled a hole in my skull and whispered them directly into my brain. Cold sweet sweat sweet su yeah. Cold sweat seeps from my forehead. My stomach begins to contract spasmatically with an ominous creaking growl. <laughs> Come on, we can do this. We can do this. We can do this. Oh, this hurts. This hurts. There's a familiar sensation of warmth draining steadily from my body. It's the same chill that usually accompanies the onset of my flashbacks. Tears roll in neat lines down my face, so cold I expect them to freeze against my cheeks. It's fortunate I didn't eat anything before this trip. Had I chosen to stop for lunch, I'd likely be vomiting it up right about now. That was the usual conclusion of my visits. In the old days, I would empty my stomach, a nurse would come running up, and that would be that. But today, it's different. Today, no one ushered me in here. I came here of my own free will, resolved to face this. Yukun told me I should see my mother. That advice was an implicit affirmation of his trust in me. He believes I'm capable of this visit. I can't give up now. It's not simply, it's simply not an option. I've come this far to put an end to my nightmares. I won't allow myself to turn back. Yes, yeah, Sachi, yes! <laughs> Clinging with all the stubborn determination I can muster to that simple decision, I somehow managed to hold myself together through the worst of it. And eventually, through an enormous effort of will, I'm able to shakily lower myself to the folding chair that sits atop th at the side of the bed. Dang. This is crazy. This looks so small. How many hours have passed since I collapsed into this chair? It feels like only moments ago, but the sun's already sinking low in the sky, the unlighted rooms illuminated by a warm orange glow from the window behind me. Now that I think more carefully, it must have taken nearly an entire hour to calm myself to the point where I could gaze at Mom's face like this. But it's been many hours since then, and I've gone no further. No words, no movement. I've spent the afternoon glued to the chair like a statue. I'm finally able to visit my mother. I can finally look her in the face again. There should be so many things to say, so many things to tell her, to ask her. But now I'm actually gazing down on her lined and passive face. The words have betrayed me. They've melted into thin air, leaving no trace by which I might find them. <sighs> At long last, I'm able to speak a single word. Is it a greeting or a half-spoken question? I I'm not sure myself. There is, of course, no response. Mom's in a deep coma because of the traumatic damage her brain sustained on that terrific a ter traffic accident. She hasn't answered a question or even spoken a word in many years now. My mother's doctor once said that the odds of her ever regaining consciousness were lower than my chances of hitting the jackpot the National Lottery. In other words, barring a miracle, she'll live out the rest of her days like this. This is her life now. Incapable of movement, left alone feeding, le let alone feeding herself. Kept alive on the whims of others like a potted plant. This is the life I gave my own mother. <laughs> With that thought, the nausea that had subsided earlier swells up in me once more. 
<laughs> Suffering comes to me in unpredictable waves with all the random malevolence of a curse. Weary and numb, I observe my own pain with a curious sense of detachment. I reach my first real conclusion of the day. Gotta say, this really, really reminds me of the House of Pot and Morgana. And the fact that it mentions a curse, it really, it really is, isn't it? And just like that, that oh, if you've never read that, you read it. Absolutely read the House of Pot and Morgana. It's so good. So good. Yeah, I see. I was like, she said it, I didn't see the text pop up. By visiting my mother for the first time in many years, my directly facing my guilt in its most raw, undiluted form, he wanted me to realize this. That so long as I live, I'll never simply be released from this suffering. My father's dead, my mother's sleeping, and she's never going to wake up. That's reality. The status quo isn't going to abruptly change for the better. All my guilt, all my attempts at atonement, no matter how sincere, they can never overturn what's come to pass. Perhaps you couldn't simply wanted me to recognize anew how truly crushing the weight of my sin really is. I don't like her, her conclusion, but I can understand why she's come to it. The answer isn't so complicated after all. Mom's the fountain of this guilt, and I'm the vessel that willingly accepts it. We're mutual culprits in these nightmares. So long as the two of us continue to cooperate, my suffering will go on indefinitely. In that case, I... What the fetch? What choice is this?! You can't be serious. What the... What?! YouTube's gonna hate this video. YouTube's gonna hate this video. I don't really care, but just a fact. All right, so I'm gonna save and I'm gonna think. First of all, both options terrible, but here's the thing. There's an initial knee-jerk reaction to be like, oh, well her mom is probably never gonna wake up anyway. And if it can relieve her guilt, then yeah. But here's the thing. Doing something like that by her own hand, if it even actually solved problems, it would just bring a new one. What kind of guilt could you possibly have there? I don't agree that this is a solution. But I think that if she can first release her mom and say that her mom... Would be like if she could to somehow accept that her mom would accept her choice, and hopefully, we help her not actually follow through with this. Maybe there's a, a chance there. But then. It doesn't ever feel like that's ever the answer. But I don't good there's no choices here! I can't choose either of these. Offing herself is running away. And it, it takes away all the joy she's found. And doesn't do any good. Taking away her mom. She's kind of already gone, but that doesn't mean that it's going to make... Like, then she has to live with that. And that's how she's supposed to find happiness again after that. She'll have gone from theoretically being the end of her mom to literally being the end of her mom. That can't be a solution either. There's got to be something else to it here, but I just don't know. One of these has got to be just the bad ending. Fetch me. I'm tempted to try and just look it up, but that's the thing. It's like, I'm not. I'm going to experience both endings at some point. I'm going to make the choice I think is best here. And knowing my luck, it's going to be the wrong one. 
But how do you like the other routes choices weren't this crazy? Ironically, it's all I'm thinking about now is Star Wars. <laughs> Leave the past behind, kill it if you have to. God, I don't know! <sighs> okay, I've got a choice, and I'm gonna make my explanation for it. I don't like it. I don't know if it's right. I'm going to find out, um, and you'll be there with me. But here's the thing. Kill your mom, I think, is the mistake. Because all it does is replace one grief and one loss with another. Maybe the fact that she makes the choice would make it a bit more bearable, but it'd still be a terrible thing to do. I'm hoping that she'll help be guided to understanding that she's not literally off, like, ending herself... But it may be ending the part of her that's she even just said a minute ago, right? Like if we scroll up to Yeah, right here. On that day, the person I was I'm I was must have died with them. So maybe that the person of you that you became afterwards also needs to die. The part of you that feels like it's your fault. The part of you that's decided that the only way to be able to to to, to avoid it is, is being a good girl. You have to accept the person you are now. So I'm hoping it's symbolic. Because if it's not, it's I, I it's not an answer either. But I'm gonna make the choice. I don't know if it's right. I don't think it's right. None of it is, obviously. And I'm not advocating that this is ever an actual answer. Like I said, if, if she goes the the actual physical route, it's absolutely not the right answer. If I if it's literal, if both these are literal, literally, literally, I would take the second one. Because I think any parent, especially a parent that's already gone through so much like this, would rather have their daughter live on. But from Sachi's perspective, I think the idea of subjecting somebody else to that is just wrong. And I don't think it would actually be a solution. Now, like I said, I have a terrible track record with this. My logic tends to not line up with the writer's logic at all. So I'm actually surprised that I got the right en the end for Michiru. But that was... For me, it feels pretty painfully obvious. You don't ignore the situation that she was in. And so, I, I this is my choice. I really, like, part of me screaming that it's wrong, but the other part of me screams that this is wrong, so I don't know. We're going to go with it. I'm the only one to blame here. Mom um, and Dad didn't deliberately get hit by the truck just to make me suffer horrible nightmares and traumatic flashbacks. I came down I came down with PTSD all on my own. My death would, I suppose, allow the clean escape from the current torment of my own conscience. If you don't like your nightmares, you'll just have to die. Yukun couldn't have arrived at such a blunt, ugly conclusion. No, I take that back. You can might well be capable of such a thought if the situation warranted it, but I'm not quite certain that's what the case was here. If you couldn't have concluded that I had no choice but to die, he would have told me so outright. But instead, the advice he gave me was deliberately vague, a hint rather than an order. You couldn't want me to retrace his reasoning to find my own path to his conclusion. Given that, the answer he wants me to find can't possibly be the simplistic brute force solution that might pop into my head right away. Okay. Yeah. Good. That's the same thing with the school. I wasn't entirely wrong. I needed to kill myself to destroy my own weakness, this frailty spirit that I've allowed to define who I am. Mom's done nothing wrong, not in asking that final question, not in continuing to sleep in her hospital bed. And irrationally speaking, the accident that occurred that day was the product of my overlapping consciousness, easy, made product of many overlapping co coincidences, easy to blame on the negligence of that drunk driver than anyone else. There's no reason for me to feel such extreme guilt and self-loathing. I think Yukun wanted me to say something along those lines. So long as I continue to cower in fear of the past, believing that accident was all my fault, this suffering will continue indefinitely. 
Instead, I should accept these sins I bear. I shoulder only the guilt I deserve to carry and strive to move forward. I believe that's the answer he was hoping for. I might find. Okay, baby, I'm right. Oh, fetch me. Really accepting something is different from merely resigning yourself to it. I can't simply ease my regrets, erase my regrets. Even now, the words, if only I'd listened to my parents on that day, are running through my mind. In the short term, I think it's unlikely I'll be able to just move on and embrace a positive mindset. But even so, Yukun said that he believed in me. I won't make him regret that trust. Maybe a long, hard road, but somehow I will overcome these nightmares. As a child, they proved impossible, but today I have Yukun. Not to mention Michiru-sama, Maki-chan, Amane-san, Sakaki-san. Uh, they all stand by my side, no matter how long it takes. Therefore, I know I can be strong. Therefore... With those final words to my sleeping mother, I leave her hospital room with steady strides. Oh, fetch me. Maybe we did it. Oh, that hurt. Almost 6.30, huh? been over five hours since Sashi told me, well then, I'll be on my way, and left the dorm. There's been no contact from her on the hospital since then, so I think it's safe to say she successfully managed to visit her mother. Right about now, odds are she's sitting next to her mother's sick bed, or perhaps already making her way back to the dorm. In the end, sitting and waiting finally grew too frustrating to endure, and I came all the way out here to meet her. It's not that I don't trust Sachi, I just want to be there, to reassure her, as soon as I possibly can. To reward her bravery and facing up to everything she's avoided for so long. To hear the answer she found, pat her head, tell her well done. Then again, I don't know what conclusion Sachi's going to reach after seeing her mother for the first time in years. I gave the poor girl a pretty nasty excuse of a hint, if I do say so myself. Yeah, not sure it was great. But simply explaining my reasoning and dropping the answer into Sachi's lap wouldn't have changed anything. Before she can accept the truth, she needs to fight through her own hard hardened preconceptions. That won't come without a struggle. I, it can't. The guilt she carries is too heavy and unwieldy a burden to shed that easily. There are two sources of Sachi's ongoing suffering. First, her bedridden mother, whose unfinished final question perpetuates Sachi's fear of her parents' hatred. Second, Sachi's own guilt-ridden heart, still branded with an ir irrational conviction that accident was my, all my fault. Unless those two issues are resolved, I don't think Sachi will ever be freed of her nightmares, and I think she knows it. Okay, we might be right then, because she can start to try and shed off her own guilt and recognize, okay, these feelings are real, but they're irrational, and starts to that can slowly start to deconstruct them. And then we take her to the workshop, and we see something there, like a present, that was a surprise for her, that showed that they still deeply cared about her. That can unravel it from the other side, too. In other words, I've deliberately forced her to contemplate the stark choice between killing her mother or herself. Neither being the correct answer. Thought she needs to kill something else entirely, something she can only understand when she's rejected the easy alternatives. And she is today, thought she can find her way to the truth. I genuinely believe that. Hmm? When I finally returned my attention to the world around me, I spot the girl in question just on the other side of the intersection. But from this distance, this position, I can't tell what answer she's found. Oh wait, I just had a terrible gut feeling that I might be in a false sense of security here. Oh no. She walks along the road, gazing far off into the sky. Is that an expression of confidence on her face or a mask of uncertainty? Somehow it seems like both and neither. Oh, you could... At the instant Sachi notices me, she begins to run toward me. Oh no, no! Wait, Tachi! <laughs> Are you serious? The truck barrels past the green light and into the intersection, tires squealing harshly against the pavement as the driver slams on the brakes. A fraction of a second later, there's a dull thump of impact. Struck by the vehicle easily over a ton in mass, Hachi's flung into the air, too fast, too far. When she lands, she lands hard. Hachi <laughs> lies crumpled limply on the asphalt, gas, small gasps groaning leaking from her mouth, a slow and expanding puddle of blood. I hate this so much. I hate this game. This game's bad endings are awful. What the hell? Just, this can't be real. This is my punishment then. My own sin, red painted over red, layer, uh, layer after thick layer until the stains was jet black and, 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 and indelible. 
though unable to even begin atoning, I tried to take on another's burden, and now I have received my rebuke. Another person who trusted me, who offered me warmth gone, another I brought to misfortune. Kazuki, Asako, and Nasachi. All the women I gave my heart to to die. Will it always end this way? Am I cursed? Because I'm at the helm, apparently. No, this isn't over yet. Sachi! Pulling myself together through the violent effort of my own will, I dash onto the road in an instant, and I'm at Sachi's side. Hey, Sachi, talk to me! <laughs> when I shout her name, her eyes slowly, o you slowly open. Sachi! <laughs> oh, you... Oh, you suck, writers. Oh, now only I'll do I finally understand. Thought she must have felt exactly as I do in this moment. As my heart's been grouched out of my chest, still beating. I'll carry this with me from now on for every moment of my life, walking or asleep. Not knowing, not to, never to hear the answer she found, never to know what she's thinking in this moment. The guilt, the ir irresolvable, eternal guilt. Fine, I won't hide from my punishment. I thought she failed to atone for her sin. I'll accept her share of suffering with the rest. You suck, game. You suck, game. Gosh darn it. Can you... S screw it. We're going back. So, did, what I said makes sense, right? I'm not a crazy person. What a... Well, at least we got it out of the way. Now I'm miserable. We can jump into the actual ending convoluted stupid logic i thought it made sense whatever i'm like genuinely mad that that was the wrong answer but at the same time they're both terrible mom's the source of my suffering after leaving me that terrifying final question she spent years in constant sleep little more than a living reminder of that tragedy at the very least, her death would put an end to the pain, even now racking my body, an end to my fear of her words. And if I want to be liberated from my nightmares, this may be the only means remaining to me. I'm a weak person. I doubt there's more selfish coward anywhere on the face of the earth. In order to protect myself from her, from my unendurable un guilt, I lied to myself for many years. I made the world simple and tried to erase who I was. But I can't tell myself that lie anymore. I can't betray... Betray you, Kun, who went so very far to make me realize my mistake. In that case, I've got no choice but to find a new way to run from the past. Namely, killing my mother. Maybe Mom's suffering is her own right, being kept alive in such a miserable state. Maybe she'd be happier going up to heaven where Dad's waiting for her, wherever, where she'll never have to see my face again. <laughs> as soon as the idea crosses my mind, nauseatingly convenient excuse pops up one after the other. I'm a terrible daughter. Even after all the suffering my selfishness caused my parents, all I'm thinking about is how to make life easier for myself. Is there even blood running through my veins? Perhaps it would actually be for the best if I were branded a criminal and sent off to jail. Yeah, a real prison where I could spend my entire life atoning for my crimes. Where people say say I'm a, afraid of... Where, wherever, whatever people may say, I'm afraid of Mahima, uh, Mahama Academy is hardly suitable for the purpose. <laughs> The days I spent there would be very special to me. Were, were very special to me. Michiru-sama, Maki-chan, Amane-san, Sakaki-san, and Principal Tachibana. Everyone I met there was a truly kind-hearted person, and above all else, I was the place where I reunited with Yukun. The place where he made me his girlfriend, where he told me that he loved me. It was all for more than I deserved. This will put an end to all of that, to my unfair, unwarranted happiness. Therefore... Therefore... With the same words I always cry when escaping from my nightmares, I reach out and put my hand on my mother's neck. ねえ、サチ。今日は何が食べたい?すごいじゃない、サチ。テストで100点を取ってくるなんて。お母さん、鼻が高いわ。Good. 
笑い声が絶えないあの家が大好きだっただからどんなにお父さんとお母さんが私のことを嫌いになってもどんなに私のことを恨んでいるとしても私はお父さんとお母さんのことを恨めない嫌いになんかなれない Yes,、yeah, definitely feels like the right answer. Fetch me. As I speak, Mom's face flashes before my eyes again and again. All the good memories. Her slightly embarrassed smile when someone said dinner was delicious. That proud grin when I told her about winning an art contest at school. The excited, happy expression she always had when talking about work with Dad. And many more, far too many to count, as all clear as day. The faces of the person I loved more than anyone else in the world. And oddly enough, the next word to leave my mouth is the same one that's been tormenting me all this time. Once the floodgates open, the words don't stop. One after another, the feelings I've kept locked inside flow uncontrollably out of my mouth. どうして仕事ばかりするようになっちゃったのどうしてお前のことが嫌いだってはっきり言ってくれなかったのそう言ってくれれば私にも何かできたかもしれないのにそれなのにどうしてあの日だけは私に優しくしてくれたのあの日も
そんな状態で気持ちを確かめる方法なんて。There is one. What if I told you it's possible? いくらユウくんでもそんなことできるわけが。Have I ever lied to you before, Sachi? そ、それは。Here's the thing. I don't know what you're going to find. For all I know, you might end up learning something you wish you haven't. You might end up going through life bearing an even heavier burden than before. Are you prepared to take that risk and learn the truth? Thought she squeezes her eyelids shut, breaking off in mid sentence. For a long moment, she contemplates, that que the contemplates the question. And when they snap open again, the anxiety and uncertainty in her eyes have been replaced with a firm determination. お父さんとお母さんの気持ちが知りたいです。こうして今のお母さんに会うことで、その覚悟はできました。だから、その結果がどうであっても、すべてを受け入れるつもりです。I see.I could never manage to do the same myself.You really are a hell of a lot tougher than you look, Sachi. Let's go, Sachi. Take my hand then. There's so many good pictures. I'll show you what you really need to kill. That's right. And no matter what answer you find in the place we're going next, I'll be your ally. You said you believed in me? Well, the feeling's mutual. I know you can do this, and if you find an answer that's too painful for one person to bear, I'll share the burden with you. I'll be there. That's not changing no matter what. Yuku. Alright, I'm done. Wanna go destroy the culprit behind your nightmares? Aww. They're <laughs> all so good! All three of them are great shots. Aww. This is my favorite one, though. Leaving the hospital behind, I set off toward the residential district. Sachi at my side. Oh no. ユウくんはどこに向かっているのでしょうか。You should know. That's the surprise. You'll find out when we get there. そうですか。I intentionally give Sachi a pretty pompous non-answer, but she doesn't take the bait. She's probably too concerned with the whereabouts of the truth I promised her to play along, so she's like she usually would. In any attempt to slightly ease Sachi's anxiety, I reach out and take her hand in mine. ユウくん。Let's help a little. I can help Sachi see her mistakes. I can offer her reassurance and affection. But if she's going to be saved outright, that's not enough. Her parents need to step in. And for how they really felt about her? Even Sachi, who spent many years with them, doesn't know. So maybe this is a little presumptuous of me. But personally, I don't think any parents loved this much by their daughter could possibly hate her in return. That's a good bet. You can go to the other side of the street. I think it's my home. I think it's my home. As I come to a halt before the small house, Sachi finally allows herself to state the obvious. To be more exact, we're heading to the workshop next door. Is this a workshop? I don't know if I can make a car to make a car. But it's just a metal die, huh? I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be D-Y-E-S, but that's probably just like a typo. Metal dies. Interesting. If that's the case, metal dies are pretty hardy, I suppose. I'm not sure I know much about them, honestly. Not a fact? All I've heard from Sachi's uncle is that her parents seem to be up to something in the workshop a little before her birthday. But hidden, but hidden in those words lies the answer Sachi's seeking. I'm pretty firmly convinced of that. So that's what happened. Well, for one thing, I have a key. <laughs> Sachi. Her mother's final question, why? Now that the woman's in a coma, we'll probably never know for sure how she intended to finish that sentence. But if a parent who'd been planning something for her daughter's birthday wanted to say one thing at the end, I think it might have been something like this. Sachi. Sachi The answer you've been seeking should be waiting in here. Yep. If you're ready to face it, open this door. With those words, I take the aged metal key out of my pocket and unlock the workshop. 
It's your decision whether you take that step, you can lock this door and walk away. And no matter what you choose, my feelings aren't going to change. You Here we go. So don't worry about me or anyone else. One way or another, you need to put an end to this with your own two hands. I... Nodding with a serious expression on her face, Sachi slowly closes her eyes. There's probably a whole torrent of conflicted feelings swirling around in her head right now. Terror that she'll discover proof her parents resented her. Hope that she'll learn the opposite was true. I can almost see the tug of war between those powerful emotions shaking the small girl's heart. Even so, Sachi's capable of accepting the truth now, whatever it may be. I absolutely believe that. With that declaration, Sachi opens her eyes and stares firmly at the entrance to the workshop. You sure about that? That's pretty par for the course, Sachi. Always. Yeah. As Sachi's hand trembles against the cold iron, I reach out and overlap it with mine. We take two long, simultaneous breaths. And push open the heavy door. Her voice full of surprise, Sachi slowly advances inside, with every step her eyes grow wider, full of confusion at the scene before her eyes. Aww. It's a mural of her. It's like a, it's a, it's an achievement board. Was the present, they sold all the machinery off. The workshop's not entirely empty. One wall's covered with dust with a dusty party decorations. A carefully arranged flock of photographs and certificates crowd the space, contrasting strongly with the dull gray wall behind. Most eye-catching of all is the large hand-lettered banner above Sachi slowly reads the words aloud. September 23rd. Today's your birthday, right? Oh my gosh, like today? Oh, that's incredible. From what I hear, you haven't been to this place even once since the day of the accident. First of all, let's get a snapshot of this. This is good. Truth is, after you wrote that letter mentioning me, I had the chance to talk with your uncle over the phone. I asked about your parents' disinterest, and he told me about this place. He didn't know the details, but it seemed as though your parents had been up to something in here the weeks before your birthday. He also told me you had no idea about any of this. It was a guess. To be honest, it was tempt I was tempted to drag you over right away, but I knew that wasn't going to cut it. As long as you kept hiding from your mother, the person you'd transformed into a, a symbol of your guilt, you couldn't possibly face up to the past in any meaningful way. Unless you were prepared to accept anything, you'd be, you'd be able to interpret whatever we found here as part of your warped narrative. Yeah. You needed to be a blank slate, so to speak. Given a piece of paper filled to the margins with thick black letters, you'd have to erase before you can write something new. You really are amazing, Yukun. Your parents are the amazing ones here. As I speak, I run my eyes carefully along the painstakingly decorated wall. Getting all those machines removed without you realizing would have been hard enough. And these decorations are all handmade. Must have taken them days. They must have wanted very badly to surprise you, to make you happy. So, I didn't want you to kill your mother. Not the woman sleeping in the hospital bed, at least. That accident was too much for a child to process. Too terrifying, too painful. Thanks to that overwhelming tragedy, you were imprinted with a hollow, false image. An image of two people who resented you and wanted you to suffer. A hateful illusion you mistook for your parents. That's what you needed to kill. That's what I was trying to say! But, yeah, yeah. You win, game. You win. In this place, time stopped on that day. 
Here's the reality. Your real mom and dad's feelings preserved in amber. Repeating my words absentmindedly, Sachi gently reaches out to touch the decorations on the wall. サチが私の絵を描いてくれた。嬉しくて涙が出た。サチはキャッチボールが好きらしい。将来はソフトボールの選手になるかもしれないなんて。お父さんと語り合った。<笑><笑> あしたから貯金を始めようか。私に習って、サチが初めて作った卵焼き。塩も入れすぎて塩辛かったはずなのに、お父さんは嬉しそうに食べていた。サチが苦手だった国語で100点を取ったテストが見つかった。ちゃん
私とお父さんは話し合って一緒にお仕事を変えることにしました大好きな幸ともっとたくさんの時間を過ごせるようにあの家でみんながまた笑って過ごせるようにそれを次の幸の誕生日プレゼントにしようそうでも私たちが好きだったこの工場がずっと幸に嫌われたままなのは悲しいそう思ってこの工場を幸が好きになってくれるような場所にしようその答えがこのアルバムです機械のなくなったこの工場はこれから幸せになっていく私たち家族の思い出を飾る記録室世界中どこを探してもここにしかないたった一つのアルバムですだからこれからここにたくさんの思い出を増やしていきましょうそれこそこの工場の中に収まらないくらいそれで幸が笑顔になってくれれば私たちはとても嬉しいです幸が楽しそうに笑ってくれていることそれが私たちにとって一番の幸せなんだものそのことがこの手紙で少しでも伝わってくれると嬉しいです、うん、それからこのオルゴールも私たちからのプレゼントとして幸に送りますサチも今日で10歳だからそろそろ好きな人ができてもおかしくない<笑>私の勘だと公園で一緒に遊んでくれているっていうユウくんが大候補かなと思っているんだけど違ったかしらでもその子に限らずサチにとって本当に大切な人ができた時そうすれば幸が素敵だと言ってくれたメロディーが幸せを運んできてくれるかもしれませんそしてその人とたくさんの恋愛をして結婚をしたら私とお父さんに負けないくらいなんてそれはちょっと気が早すぎたかもしれないけれど幸の未来が幸せであるようにずっとずっと。笑っていられるようにそれが幸に幸せという名前をつけた私たちの願いです少し長くなってしまったけれど私たちが幸に伝えたかったことはこれで全部ですそして最後にもう一つだけ「愛してる」はまだ難しいかもしれないからこの言葉で。私たちの子供に生まれてきてくれてありがとうサチああ<笑>私の方こそお母さんお父さんサチ has the answer she's been yearning to find since her childhood I stand quietly at her side as the tears flow and streams down her cheeks can't say for sure how it felt to read that letter that's something only Sachi herself will ever know But there's only one thing I can say with some confidence. She won't be suffering from those nightmares again. Because right now, the words spilling from her mouth aren't I'm sorry, but thank you. And while I might just be a completely deluded narcissistic moron, I'm pretty sure I also know what the next words out of her mouth are going to be. I... Just now, you asked me to ask you. Oh, what would that be? With me... このオルゴールを聞いてもらえますか<笑> ?Yeah, I think I can do that. Is it gonna play it over the credits? Aww. <笑> gosh darn it. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. That was something else. It's so interesting because I'm at this point now where I have a really good perspective on the whole series. And、uh, I don't want to say too much because I got to save that for next week. 
which is now going to be the last, uh, the, the rat party. But, uh, that's something. I'm going to have a lot of really strong words to say when it comes to other routes, but I'm going to say, say a little bit about this route in particular. Also, might have to blur out some of these pictures. It depends on which versions of the pictures go through. But genuinely, fantastically well-written story. I don't think I could ever come up with something that powerful. And it's so interesting because I've got a lot to say about Sachi as a character. Um, but she's so... She fits the universe and Yuji specifically so well. She's a great example of someone who's like a like a parallel story, but yet all entirely her own. And it's really cool to see that dynamic between them. But it's funny because you won't understand that dynamic as well if you haven't seen the hints that are given in the other routes. So in a way, I'm kind of glad that this was the second one I played because there's a lot of other parallels that bounce off of that, which is something I'll talk about a lot. Okay. You should see my notes. I guarantee you that rap party's probably gonna be two, three hours, because I won't be able to shut up about this whole thing. So, genuinely fantastic story here. And it's like it's 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 amazing, cause like that that connection between parents and children is very special, and it's not something you can even truly like. You feel like you understand it, but as you get older and as you experience more life and as you like walk down those paths yourself, like. It changes the perspective so much, so powerfully. And it's like that feeling and that growth and that connection is so much more impactful than you'd imagine. And uh, I guess I will say this. It really reminds me, um, a few months ago, it, it was like Father's Day, right? Like in June, we have Father's Day as a holiday. And I remember I just, out of the blue, you know, kind of like usual, I called my dad and talk to him and we were just chatting and sharing stories and he was talking about some of the stuff he'd been doing recently and I kind of ended up pausing and I was thinking about my own history and like the person who I am and how I got here and I remember I said to him I was just like you know what dad we didn't always see eye to eye but a lot of the stuff that you did by living and taking care of me both good and bad taught me who I wanted to be and gave me skills and taught me what was important in life. I might not have understood it at the time, but a lot of the things that you said that when we were growing up came right back around and became foundational for the way I became an adult. And like, I just like told him, I said like, I was like, the little things you did and said that I never appreciated at the time became so important to me now. And a lot of the tenacity and the ability to to pick up something and to do do things and not be afraid to like try and do, learn to do something of my own will to fix things on my own with my own two hands to to ask questions and be able to to to, to turn to others and recognize that I can work on things and learn from other people. And my mom too, she taught me so much, how to listen and care and she taught me about like self-determinism and how you can't just wallow when things go poorly. You step up, you, you grab things by your own hands and you make them happen. She also was really good about helping me and I think my dad too, about just the importance of understanding and listening. To be able to sit down and take yourself out of the equation and just really understand where someone else is coming from. And that's foundational and probably the, the backbone of why I love stories like visual novels so much is because I learned from a young age to think about things from the perspectives of others and put myself in their shoes. That's why I take these things so seriously. It's so good. So incredible. I owe my parents a lot. Parents don't have to be perfect to be able to be good parents. Kino, 
二塁に向かって走っていたミチル様に投げつけたの。What a change. そしたら、マキちゃんは肩が弱いからバウンドボールになっちゃったんだけど、平らな地面でつまずいちゃったミチル様がヘッドスライディングしたところにそのボールが乗っかって見事にアウト。私はその間に一塁へ走ってセーフだったんだけど、ミチル様もマキちゃんもすごいよね。The hospital room was filled with a warm glow of afternoon sunlight. As a gentle breeze blows in through the open window, Sachi chatters on, recounting the recent happenings at、uh, Mihama Academy. Unlike before, there's no trace of melancholy in her expression. Of course, that doesn't mean her mother's offering any reply. Even so, her sleeping face looks strangely peaceful. Somehow, it makes me think of, par-、uh, of a parent affectionately hand- half listening to her daughter's stories while doing housework. Komine san! 失礼しますねあ,あらさっちゃん今日も来てくれてたのね The one side of conversation is interrupted by the arrival of the familiar nurse who immediately greets the two of us はいこれから検温の時間ですかその通りなんだけどすぐに終わるからそのままで大丈夫よあいえちょうどキリが良かったですから私たちはここでそうそれならいいんだけどはい Still smiling, Sachi slowly rises from her seat. I follow suit, pushing myself up off,、uh, off my undersized folding chair. As she speaks, Sachi gently squeezes her mother's hand. Absolutely. After exchanging polite little nods with the nurse, we quietly leave the hospital room. You really are right with that? Nani ga desu ka? Wrapping up the visit so quickly. Hai, kyo wa kore de o s h i m a des. Sachi seems to have grasped what I'm getting at, but her, rep- her reply is strangely casual in tone. Didn't you have more you wanted to talk about? So, re wa mochiron des. So, why did you stay a little longer like the nurse suggested? An mari naga bana shi o s h t e o k a s a n o k o m a r a s e t a k u nai des kara. What? 私がお母さんに話さなければいけないことはたくさんあります。今までお見舞いに来られなかった間に私が経験したこと。三浜学園でのことや、ゆうくんとのこと。ああ。それを一度にたくさん聞かされるのはお母さんも大変だと思うんです。うん、guess you've got a point。だからたくさん病院に通って少しずつお話ししていきたいんです。There's no guilt or bitterness in Sachi's eyes as she speaks those words. They are the shining eyes of a child talking about a beloved parent. I see. Fine. You've convinced me. <laughs> oh, now that you mention it. Something about reverting to childhood and spending the whole day playing in the park, wasn't it? Hi. <laughs> oh, sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the moment she realizes the playground's empty, Sachi takes off the road to, at a gallop, practically floating off the ground with excitement. Today, the two of us are playing in the park where we first met until Sachi's thoroughly satisfied. This is what she chose for her belated birthday present. What a funky girl. <laughs> How are you keeping a straight face on right now? <laughs> yes, you have to understand. You do, she's not joking. This is entirely what she plans to do for the entire day. As my birthday present to you, I'll accept any one, any one request unconditionally, no matter how spoiled or selfish it may be. From the moment I made my offer, Sachi's been eagerly anticipating this day. I knew the girl never really lost her fundamental love for playing around outside, but it seems all those years of self denial may have amplified her enthusiasm. You seriously want to go straight through the midnight? In some ways, that might be harder than your average ra- ranger training course. You can w a t o n a w a g a m a m a d e m o k i t e k u r e r t o i t e m a s t a y o n e It's true. Yeah, that's what I said. But can we try to be a little realistic? Human beings do have their limits. So, r e n a r a s o n o g e n k a i m a d e d e k a m a i m a s e m a z u a b r a n k o k a r a h a j i m e m a s h o If this limit exists, we'll hit it and I'll call it quits. 
And even as she speaks, Sachi's yanking impatiently on my arm. You're not listening to a word I say, are you? I may be grumbling, but for some mysterious reason, there's a smile on my face. This is how it's been lately. We eat our meals together. We talk about nothing in particular and end up laughing. Every once in a while, she pulls me around like this. Hackenite stuff. This sort of thing I used to read about in cheap love stories. Maybe the happiness I wanted to help Sachi find was something as simple as that. Even after visiting that workshop, neither Sachi nor I believed that we'd come to understand everything her mother and father were thinking. The fleeing of the feelings of two parents cut down by an accident in the middle of searching for their distraught child. That's probably something you can't fully understand until you have a family and children of your own. But there's one thing that's clear. The two of them wanted her to find happiness even greater than their own. In a way, that bittersweet knowledge will be Sachi's punishment from now on. A family, huh? At the rate this relationship's going, the two of us might end up married. Maybe even have children of our own some point, at some point. Kind of bizarre in a, way, in a way. I wouldn't have been capable of imagining such a future just a few short months ago. But right now, it seems completely natural, even obvious. And if Sachi's feeling the same way, I don't think anything could make her me happier. Hey, Sachi, I've got a suggestion to make if you're willing to listen. <laughs> that's awesome. They hear from her especially. Yeah, that's not it. What do you think about getting married after we graduate from uh, Mihama? Yeah, even if I end up quitting my current job somewhere down the line, I'm confident I'll be able to feed the two of us. And I want you to be with me for the rest of my life, Sachi. <laughs> he kind of did, yeah. But you know what? What a better place, right? I mean, for these two, it's literally where they met. Why not? Guess so. なるほどです。確かに結婚すれば三浜学園を卒業してもゆうくんと一緒にいられますし、それはとても魅力的な提案です。Well, that, that technically could have happened without the marriage, but commitments are good is very important. Nodding to herself, Sachi slowly closes her eyes. Yes, it's decided then? いえ、お断りします。Really? Say what? Thrown off balance by this 180 de degree reversal from her initial reaction, I do a bit of a double take. <laughs> now there's a picture. Holy crap. Oh, this might be my favorite one of the whole game. That's adorable. The mid-afternoon sun blazing down as if to insist summer's not over yet is thoroughly outshone by a single dazzling smile. That smile belongs to a girl named uh, Kumine Sachi. The only child of two people who treasured her above all else. The daughter of two parents who exchanged their ambitions for one simple wish. And today I'm sure the two of them know their wish has been wholeheartedly inherited. Because that woman I love has found a smile so befitting of her name her parents gave her. That's cool. Of course, I have a feeling that if kicking the shoe was going to be like the determining factor, he probably was going to find a way to like strap it to a rocket and just launch it to the next prefecture. Well, here we are. It's over. That's sad. <laughs> it was a really good ending, though. Fetch me. Whew. All the endings have been pretty solid, honestly. Most of them pretty powerful. Some flat out horrifying. And we'll talk all about them in the future. Actually, next week. So, if you're new to this for whatever reason, there's some of you who are new, just keep in mind the way this works. I do what's called a rap party. It's a holdover from my time working for a newspaper in high school and college. Essentially, it's right before you're going to send everything to print. You do a final overview and you make sure that everything's looking just perfectly. Usually, it means staying after long into the night having a big party while you're like wrapping everything up and making sure it's all looking nice and kind of putting the bow on it to make it to seal the deal and it's off to the printers and it's you know never gonna be touched again so i do my own rendition of that for this channel so what's a wrap party well i live stream i simply take all my thoughts and notes about the whole series i kind of like put them in a bullet point and i kind of just go on a big rant usually i have a playlist of like the intro sequence and screenshots that I've collected through the gameplay and just kind of on play and I just talk and talk and talk. Now the reason I do a live stream, because for the few people who manage to be able to be there live, they can often 
like give commentary like i watch the live uh, chat and i can kind of respond directly to people if they have questions or they want me to talk about certain topics or they just have thoughts to share so if you would like to attend this uh broadcast feel free to it'll be it's always on the day that the videos normally would have gone live so in this case it'll be friday so the friday following like this video going live we should assuming i don't have anything like reason why i can't do that which if i can't i'll, I'll post it but Assuming that there's nothing in the way, I go live. I usually do a live stream from 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, like 10, 10 o'clock p.m. So uh, I usually post like a direct link onto the, the channel. So like you should be able to see and compare it. And also a day before you should see a kind of an alert pop up in your feed. If you're a subscriber, it'll let you know like, hey, this is upcoming. And it'll also notify you when I'm actually live. So if you want to attend, there's a bell you can hit that will notify you. You can put it in your calendar. I'd love to have you there. Um, occasionally I will even have like a guest appear if they have an interest in like being there and kind of doing a podcast style where I kind of do the same thing, but I can often ask them questions or get them feedback and they can ask me questions. I'm usually open to that. Um, we're still such a small channel that that usually doesn't become a big issue. And so why not enjoy it? So if somebody feels really passionately and doesn't feel shy about being broadcast on YouTube, that, and it'll be archived and you know, forever available. Like if that doesn't make you uncomfortable, I'd love to invite you on. Um, we can coordinate it. Even if we have a couple people, uh, we can make it work. If there's too many people, I'll, I might have to like cut that down. It just, it's one of those things where we've never had that issue yet. So I just throw it as a caveat. Anyway, enough of this. Just next week, keep an eye out for the live stream. I'll summarize everything. And then the nice thing is that because it's archived and saved to the playlist, You'll also be able to watch it post. So if you miss it for whatever reason, you can just watch it and listen to what my thoughts were about the entire game as a whole. And at the very end, I always do a best girl, um, sometimes best boy, but in this case, Yuji's best boy. I mean, who else could there even be? Uh, and then I kind of give most of my overall thoughts of the game as a whole. And assuming that I don't have any major hiccups, we also will announce what the next series will be. And that's a big one because it's Fan Friday, which means it's a directly voted by the channel. So. The, if you're a patron or a member, um, I will take your uh, specific weighted ideas. So the, like, uh, I'll listen and I'll kind of list like a, like a large list and like give you an opportunity to vote for any that you feel particularly you want to make sure makes it to like the grand like elect like the vote. And I'll narrow that down from like a list of five or six to three, and then those three will be publicly voted on by the channel as a whole. So everyone gets an opportunity to kind of give a democracy vote on what you want to see next on Fridays. So if that's something you're interested in and you want to get some last second like recommendations out, go to the Discord. There's a section for visual novel recommendations for the blue shifting. Go check that out. Put a recommendation there. I'll vote a recommendation you see there that you support. And then if you're a patron or member, uh, I'll be posting something and asking for direct feedback. If you have anything to offer, I'd love to hear from you specifically because again, you've more than earn the right to be able to be on the working floor for all of this. And then when push comes to shove, we'll have that list out and available probably after the life, like be between like the, the, this episode airing and the, few, and, uh, the days before the live stream, probably that whole week we'll be voting. And at the end of the vote, I will announce what our official next, uh, visual novel for Friday will be. So pay attention to that. That's enough though. This has gone way too long enough already. Hopefully you found that information enjoyable. Thank you so much for all your direct support. Patreon and members, obviously, but also anyone who's just watched all the way through, especially for like, what, a two-hour video? I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you enjoyed the Fruit of Grisaia on the Blue Shifting. It was a blast. And I can't wait to share all my thoughts about all the routes with you. So I hope you stick around. But until next video watching me, I'll see me next. I'll see you there.